Hi everyone, I'm really excited to share the interview I had with Tom Rosenberg, President and CEO of the American Camp Association. Before we get into the video, I want to share a bit about Tom. Tom has a distinguished career in the camp profession and a long resume of service to ACA. He is currently the Executive Director of Camp Judea in Hendersonville, North Carolina, where he will fulfill his commitments and direct their summer program before joining ACA. Tom has extensive camp leadership experience in both for-profit and non-profit camps. Prior to Camp Judea, Tom spent more than two decades with Blue Star Camps in North Carolina, most of those years as a director. Tom is a past national treasurer and board member of ACA, as well as a past board president and treasurer of ACA Southeastern. He most recently served on ACA's 2016 National Conference Program Committee in Atlanta. A founding board member of the North Carolina Youth Camp Association, Tom was awarded the Henderson County Chamber of Commerce's inaugural Camp Industry Leadership Award, as well as the American Camp Association's National Honor Award and ACA Southeastern's Distinguished Service Award. With an educational focus in business, Tom graduated with distinction from the Marshall School of Business at the University of South Southern California with an MBA and from the A.B. Freeman School of Business at Tulane University with a B.S. in Management. He is also a graduate of ACA's Camp Director Institute. Tom lives with his wife, Pam Sugarman, and their son, Daniel, in Atlanta, Georgia. He will be dividing his time between the ACA Administrative Office in Indiana and his home office in Atlanta. Hope you enjoy. Thank you so much. Because I am a, a parent who has uh, two children, uh, one who is nine and the other one who is six, uh, both who are, um, you know, in, who have attended summer camp and are in different stages of summer camp. Nice. Um, yes. And my, my, my older one is going to be doing sleepaway camp for the first time this summer. Awesome. So, yeah. So I you're in the so trenches. Absolutely. You're, so you're going through all this stuff right now. Yes. That's great. Yep. So you say yep. you have a nine and 11? No, sorry. A nine and a six year old. Nine and a six. Okay. Yeah. 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 So, so I'm, getting... I'm, I'm just getting started. I'm yeah. just getting started. Did you go to Camp Gale? I did. I went to um, Ramah in the Berkshires. Sure. Uh, yes. From around the time I was like 10. Uh, and then I went all the way up to age like 16. And then nice. I then I was on staff for a couple summers. So nice. I have a lot of experience there, as do my siblings. Nice. Um, yeah. So it's definitely something that's part of my experience and my, my past. But I also know that camp looks very different now than it did when I was a child. Right. And a lot of the things that I experienced may not be quite the same. And I, right. I have learned to not always rely on my own experiences to explain to my kids what camp might be like. Cause I, I got caught cause I would say, Oh, this is what it's going to be like. And then, well, maybe it's not, it's not the same. That's really <laughs> smart. I, I think yeah. definitely camps are all a little different. Um, are you thinking for your son to follow in your footsteps to Berkshires or? Well, that's, that's, he is, he is enrolled. Um, that is the plan. Cool. Um, yeah. And, um, you know, cause I'm familiar with it and he also has some friends who are going to be there and we sort of went back and forth over how long and when, but yeah. we sort of landed on doing a month. Uh, that seemed actually technically three weeks cause it's the second session. So not even a full month. That right. seemed to be right where he was, okay with and he was you know what felt okay for for us um just in terms of what he could handle what we could Forward. handle as a family and all yeah, those yeah. things um and we've been chatting about it more and more as the summer's been getting closer uh yeah. you know, getting excited about what's to come what to maybe expect also you know reassure you know, some reassurance about um you know that he's going to be cared for and all those things absolutely and, and uh, so I'm happy to have you here today. And I, I know you're a busy man, so I don't want to. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. Yes, I love yes. Well, you know, I understand you have probably a lot on your plate now, especially this time of year. Yeah. And so, yeah. So I just, I wanted to talk with you today, ask uh, you some questions, if you don't mind, uh, totally. uh, just about uh, the camp experience and your thoughts as the uh, the president and CEO of the American Camp Association. I think you are a perfect person to to chat about these things. I used and, to be a camp director as well, so I've been there. Absolutely. Um, so I, 
you know, my questions are really in no particular order. They're just kind of as I thought of them. So feel free to bounce around or to, you know, if something else comes up and you think it's, uh, is worth addressing, feel free to jump ahead. There's no, uh, this is not too formal. I hope that's okay with you. Yeah. Um, yeah. So my, the first question, uh, that came to mind to me is when you have a, if you're a family where you have a child who really wants to go to camp, okay, they really want to go, that's something they express interest in doing, yeah. and their parents can't agree or their guardians can't agree on on whether or not to send them. So I'm curious when you have, uh, from that perspective, if like, you know, maybe one parent's a little hesitant, maybe one parent doesn't have the camp experience and they don't know, maybe there's a worry about cost or all those things. So how does that conversation, or how can that conversation happen in the home um, yeah. when there's an interest expressed, but there's maybe not uh, a, an agreement? Yeah. And we're talking from an overnight camp perspective mostly, right? Mm -hmm. okay. um, yes. I mean, I guess it could apply elsewhere, but I think it's would, I would guess that the bigger, an overnight camp is probably a bigger discussion. Yeah. It's a lot easier to send a child to day camp. Um, right. for many reasons. I mean, there's so many things that go into an overnight camp. So I'm going to say for the purpose of this question, yes, uh, overnight camp would be the focus for sure. Okay. Yeah. You know, so Gail, uh, the decision um, to send your child to camp, uh, particularly overnight camp, is a really big one. Uh, typically, you're going to stick with that camp for a while. It's a big investment of funds. It's a, you know, um, so there's, there's a lot to it. And it's not unusual that one parent maybe has been to overnight camp and one parent maybe has not been to overnight camp or um, they've been to different kinds of camps and they're struggling with what kind of camp is best for our our, old, our eldest child. That's where it all starts, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, you know your kids best, but I think that um, there, there, there's no uh, shortage, sorry, there's no uh, substitute for diving into the details and um, sort of getting, well, let's, let's assume that you can get to a point at least that you're, as, as, as a couple, you're willing to, both agree to try and look for an overnight camp for your child, right? Mm -hmm. um, maybe you haven't decided on the type yet, but if you could like w search online for maybe four or five possibilities and also talk to your friends and neighbors and relatives who also have a children of camp age, where they're sending their kids, what kind of background they've had. Um, a lot of times kids are going to camp with their friends. So finding out what your child's peers are already doing if they are going to a camp um, so that's all, all really important. Um, you know, at, here at the American Camp Association, we can say that there's so many different kinds of camps. So it's, it's really important to sort of dial into um, all the possibilities and get a sense of what you're looking for. Um, and there's just the best way to do that is start on the internet uh, and then also watch some videos. A lot of them have online videos. And you can hop on the phone with several of the camps you've identified and start to ask questions uh, from those uh, camp directors. Um, it's a, as a former camp director of 27 years myself, the best camps really approach this from a partnership perspective with you as a parent. You know, they're going to hopefully be your your uh, partner in parenting your child during the summer for some time. And so, getting a sense of their philosophies, um, their the, the different kinds of uh, program emphases emphasis, I can't even speak today, um, getting a sense of the, the different kinds of programs that they offer, um, how they um, find and uh, recruit their staff talent. And so, for example, some camps will, will have younger uh, staff like uh, junior a CIT program. Some camps won't have anyone on property in a, in a staff position but they have, have not had a year of college. So camps can be very different about that as well. Um, but you want to get a sense of what makes that each of those camps tick as uh, what makes them unique and strong and powerful philosophically, um, understanding everything you can about, um, well, what, what's important there? Because, for example, if you have a child who's very athletic, or you have a child who's more uh, interested in STEM programming, or you have um, maybe an introverted child, for example, and you want to get a sense of whether the camp's tuned into working with kids who, have, who are more introverted, um, and, and, I'll, and at the same time, um, you, you know, hopefully at some point we'll be allowed to have give tours again at camp and actually you can take a drive and, um, uh, and, and visit several camps the summer before you think your child might be ready for camp. Um, uh, that is really powerful when they can start to see camp and demystify what mom and dad have been talking about. It really makes a difference. 
And the other thing I always talk about is today there's a new phenomenon that's that's really taking hold, which is family camp. Um, when you have young children who are not yet ready for overnight camp, you can go as a family group and and um, enjoy uh, a week or, or a long weekend of, of family camp, mom and dad and their children too. And there are going to be activities for the kids. There are going to be activities for the adults and there'll be activities for both of you. Um, and again, they start to really get a sense of how fun and how exceptional a camp experience really is. Thank you. So, appreciate it. Yeah. yeah. Thank, no, that's wonderful. Thank you for, for that. Uh, that answer is very, very helpful, very thorough. And, and the other thing I would just say, Gail, is, yes. to, you know, when you're, when you're talking as, as, uh, as husband and wife or as partners about camp for your kids, um, it's really important to, um, to think about why camp is more essential today than ever before. Because, you know, so our kids have been isolated for 15 plus months. Um, they've, their social and emotional learning competencies have been delayed. Uh, their time, time spent with peers in person has been greatly reduced. Um, there's, a, you know, I think in that isolation time that they've had, um, kids um, have not had an opportunity to take positive risks, try new things, and make mistakes and learn from those mistakes and try again and sort of building resilience, building confidence, building self-esteem. So camp is, is flush with many, many opportunities like that. At camp, we're putting down our phones, we're turning off the computers, except for computer programs that might be STEM related uh, at the camp. And we're, we're focusing on human skills, human, uh, the human experience, right? Learning how to relate to other kids your age kids from different neighborhoods, people who are different than yourself, and you're learning to sublimate your own desires and needs for that of the group, right? Mm -hmm. And so it's a very powerful, it's always been a very powerful experience, but in this time with so many children suffering from mental, emotional, and social health challenges, camp is essential for all kids. Absolutely, and uh, you uh, brought up some points there, which um, I think are, maybe unique to this sort of time that we're in. And um, so just how do you think camps will be in a unique position? I I'm sure they were in it last summer, but this summer as well, because now we're sort of in a, you know, we're in a better place than we were last summer, I would say, in terms yeah. of how things can function, but still have, you know, there's a lot, there's COVID, there's also a lot going on in the world. Um, to your point about just maybe, uh, maybe a growing sense of anxiety among children. Um, how do you think camps in particular um, are going to prepare for that? How, or how have they been preparing? I mean, I think maybe you can speak to it in your role as to maybe what um, some of the camp leadership has been doing ahead of the summer to, to address some of those anxieties and fears that might be coming in uh, this summer that may be not, you know, that may not have existed in the past or, or what they have done this past summer and maybe some uh, lessons learned and some uh, yeah. things tweaked or changed to to better suit campers this summer. Yeah. So, you know, um, in COVID, um, what camp directors are seeing is that kids, um, well, camp offers them an opportunity to slow down and just be, right? So come to camp. Um, and when they when the kids get to camp, in, in some cases, when they had been like, in the summer of 21, kids had been isolated for 15 plus months. They were out of shape. They were out of sorts. They were more emotionally reactive than uh, resilient. Um, so they were more likely to freeze or run or strike out perhaps in a very unfamiliar situation. Where um, So at, at camp these days, what we're trying to do is to create um, enough space in the experience so that kids can just talk when, because in some cases they haven't had a lot of peer to peer time. Um, they're going to have uh, really lean into some opportunities to move their bodies, uh, get some exercise, eat well, eat better. Um, uh, but also, um, you know, I'm a dad and um, I find that I, even though I'm a former camp director of many years and I'm in this role, I find that we tend to hold our son so close um, to, to even prevent him from trying new things and taking positive risks and making mistakes. You know, uh, we don't want our kids to make mistakes. It's kind of a hard time right now as a parent. Mm -hmm. Camp um, provides nurturing counselors and leadership um, in, a, in a safe environment where you're off, you get to go to work and they get to go to camp. 
And, um, and, and overnight camp is such an immersive environment where it's all about um, building their confidence and their self-esteem. It's all about building the group, teaching them how to be a part of a group, how to communicate effectively. And so, um, so some of the things that camps have been doing to help kids unpack what they've been feeling, right? And, um, and help them get into the camp spirit. Part of that's about like um, um, adjusting the schedule of the camp, um, allowing more talk time, allowing um, um, kids um, more opportunities to um, just um, reflect on how they feel. Um, you know, good solid mental health is all about being able to express your feelings, positive and negative, and have a place to put them and, 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 and be in a place where you can be emotionally and physically safe. So we, we're trying to really um, help, help kids um, attain that level of physical and emotional safety at camp as, as quickly as we possibly can. Um, and we can talk about homesickness if you want, but, um, you know, in, um, in COVID, um, kids have, have really been struggling with increased anxiety. Um, because if you think about it, Gail, mm. um, when you're alone, isolated at home and don't have as much of a chance to really be in person with your friends, um, you're really talking to yourself a lot. You're not getting to talk to them. Mm. And <clears throat> sometimes with social media, a lot of our kids are also in, sort of been online way more than they normally would be. And um, that's helped in some ways, but oftentimes that hasn't helped. And so, um, in, in particular, um, psychologists talk about uh, girls being susceptible to negative self-talk from that social media. And um, so camp is a place where kids um, really can um, learn to listen and talk um, with each other and um, share ideas and develop um, a feeling of emotional safety and confidence that they can't really achieve it as easily at home. Um, you know, we're just getting to a point where we're going back out as a, as a public right now. And um, this summer um, is a really important summer for all of our kids in our country because this is the summer when they, they'll be able to, um, at camp, um, you know, uh, be a part of an immersive group and take some positive risks, try new things, um, you know, be encouraged by their counselors to take positive risks and, and learn how to celebrate making mistakes and then trying again and trying again and then finally achieving something that was hard. Um, as a dad, I really love that camp provides my son with a place to do hard things that I don't really reinforce so well, or my wife and I don't really re reinforce as well at home. So um, that, that's, that's the essence of camp. Um, so I would say that, um, you know, um, I'm just trying to make sure I'm hitting your your, your problem. Well, you are, you are. Uh, uh, no, thank you. I, I appreciate it. I just didn't want to. I didn't want to cut you off mid thought. So, okay. um, no, absolutely. No, you absolutely are hitting all all my all my thoughts, all my questions, and I think you're uh, giving wonderful feedback here. So I appreciate it, Tom. Thank you. Yeah. Um, you did touch uh, just uh, you touched on um, a couple of things that I uh, wanted to talk a little more about. Uh, one is um, the sort of the transition from going to a, going from, from a more digitally involved space, whether it's just mm -hmm. being in a digital, rather being in school online all the time, or just being constantly on the phones. I mean, it's a different world than, you know, when I went to summer camp, I'm sure when you obviously, when, when both of us went to summer camp, this was not, there wasn't the issue of, oh, well, now you have your cell phone and now you don't. Um, right. And I'm just curious for, for parents and uh, for guardians who are, um, embarking on this sleepaway camp journey for the first time. And how do camps, and I'm assuming most, most sleepaway camps based on what you said, do limit, um, you know, yeah. social media and tech, unless it's in like, you know, unless it's in like some sort of program. So it's, it's much more limited. Uh, I guess the extreme might depend on each camp than it would be during the year. So how do camp, uh, camp how can, how camps help make, the kids make that transition and also how can families help their kids make that transition? Right. Um, you know, cause I, I imagine it might be a bit of a, a, a shock when you first day of camp, you go on camp and oh, well, you can't be checking your Instagram all day or can't be going on TikTok. Um, uh, so how does right. that happen? Is there, 
uh, guidance for families for that? Um, Absolutely. You know, and I just want to start by saying most most camp professionals will tell you that their experienced campers relish the opportunity to hand you back their phone for three and a half weeks while they go off to a camp. Mm -hmm. They relish it. Um, they are so pleased to not have the responsibility of keeping up with Instagram mm -hmm. or whatever their kids are, are, uh, are involved in. Um, you know, and the way you can explain it to your young first time campers though, is that camp is about being, you know, uh, super authentic in person. Right. We're, we're working on building authentic relationships um, with people we're with immersively. So all day, every day, you're going to be immersed in, an, in a program, um, in a community that is in person uh, and nothing and other than school, which school is different. Right. It's a little more structured mm -hmm. um, at camp. They're going to have more opportunity to make choices um, and, and like if they're more curious about something to lean into that curiosity where at school it's going to be more structured. So um, it's, uh, camp is essentially a, 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 a really authentic experiential learning and kinetic learning experience that's a, an important part of a child's year-long learning landscape. But the only way it can really work is if everyone um, invests all they have in that immersive experience with their bunk group, right? So get you know the more you put into your bunk or your activity group, the more you're going to get out of that group. And so that's like the first thing that you learn um, when you when you go to when you go to overnight camp in particular, but also day camp. Um, you know, you're you're going to learn um, that very first night or that very first afternoon. You know, um, you're enter you you sit down with your cabin mates and you talk about how should we treat each other. You talk about what what rules should we should we have for each other to make this the best summer ever, and what kind of goals do we want to set as a bunk group or a cabin group together um for for our summer experience and and the, the counseling staff are trained to mod to facilitate these conversations and kids make uh like a bunk contract of sorts um and then um you know and and from the very moment that that starts happening you, that young person starts to feel like they belong mm. so it's essential that they feel like they belong that they're contributing that they're valued and loved quite frankly and um and so when when you when all those things start to click, it takes a little while, a few days, but it starts to click because you're really with these other young people all the time, immersively, in person, not online. So it doesn't take long before you forget about your device back home. Forget about the fact that the previous week you were online for 10 hours a day, maybe. Mm -hmm. I don't know. You know, so um, so I think that um, having conversations, it's important to you know, as camp gets closer, it's important to start to have conversations with the kids uh, that helps them uh, get excited and anticipate some of these changes where it's going to be more in person. Um, and you can coach them to be um, authentic, honest. Uh, you know, the great thing about going to camp, especially like overnight camp, when you're immersive for multiples of weeks, you have the chance to be anybody you want to be at camp. Mm -hmm. You can be anyone you want to be at camp. Uh, you might be going to camp with friends from home. You might not be. And and so there's a, a luxury if you're going with you don't know people that you're going with. Right. You're going to go and just find the friends that you make at camp um, it can be a very powerful experience. You can be someone different than you are in school. Mm. So um, I think that, uh, you know, th there's never been a more important time for kids to have the opportunity to go to day and overnight camp immersively without their devices. They've been inundated by technology during this pandemic if they've been privileged enough to have devices. Um, and as a result, um, they've been able to hide themselves behind the screen, right? Absolutely. Um, at camp, you learn just to be you, just learn how to take a deep breath and just be you. And um, everyone else, if everyone else can do that too, then you start to appreciate each other for who they are. Um, and you start to learn to make allowances for differences and you start to learn to, to live and work and play with people who are different than you. And you have even learned how to have disagreements, discussions, um, and uh, work through those kinds of uh, uh, group challenges, let's say. It's so important. Um, and all of this, Gail, as a parent, you should know that when you send your nine-year-old off to have this kind of experience, they are building social-emotional learning competencies which research has shown for some time 
that all really builds academic success. It helps your child do better in school. That, when you think about the very best schools today, right? A lot of them um, self-describe as PBL or project-based learning schools, mm -hmm. uh, you know? And so camp is a rich project-based learning environment where kids are practicing every day, all day, all the time, how to work together to problem solve, how to, how to um, communicate with each other, how to be creative with each other, um, all of it, absolutely all of it. And, um, and it's, and it's so all, they bring all of that with them to school when they return in the fall. And so I wish that um, my goal is to help expand the field of camp so that, you know, 74 million boys and girls that are school age have an experience or experiences going to camp so they can gain these same benefits um, that some about about 26 million um, school age children were going to camp pre-COVID. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's just not enough today. Now seeing how all of our kids have been impacted the way ha they have in this in this pandemic. Absolutely. And I, I think you touched on a great point about how um, you know it's I think sometimes people may look at um, the summers off from school and camp as or, you know, maybe it's like, you know, it's a break or it's a, it's a, you know, it's a COVID vacation. And it's like, you know, there's learning loss and, and all those things. And there's that fear of, uh, of that, uh, you know, of that happening. And I think what you spoke about just now, it really feeds into how all those experiences can enhance the learning can, um, that it's not, uh, um, you know, that as they, I know the old adage that, you know, play, you know, play is learning, um, yes. active is learning. It's not, um, it's not an either or kind of situation. It's not a, right. Right, this, you know, so it all can feed in and it can and lead into that. So I think that's a really, cause I think it's a really great point to share because I think some, uh, I imagine a concern for a lot of families is, oh, wait a minute. Like maybe they, sh especially those who are more academically minded, maybe like, oh, wait, our child is going to be, you know, could be, is going to be not doing schoolwork for two months. Oh no. Like, is it going to be, um, and yeah. to, to the point, it, it could actually serve them, um, in yeah. their and stuff like that. So I think that's a really great point to share. Uh, yeah, you. just another word on that. I, I would just say that, um, you know, camp is expanded learning, right? So it's taking what you learn in school academically and and, and actually applying that knowledge and um, those dispositions to learning that they get um, in camp to learn to go deeper, right? Um, they, you know, we, we want our children to grow up with a tremendous growth mindset where they feel like they can learn anything they set their mind to. The when one of the ways we talk about it is we want everyone to lead at camp to learn to be an everyday learner, right, and an everyday leader, mm. hopefully as well. Um, and so and so most camps are very purposeful. They're they're helping them build those social emotional connections with each other, helping them develop skills around social emotional competencies, and practice that in the whole all the time. But they're also really trying to help them uh, learn lean in on their math skills, lean in on their reading, lean in on their uh, science, um, uh, get out in nature and experience um, scientific phenomena in, in person out in nature. Um, some camps are more um, actually have, have curriculum that are tied to, you know, tied to the state board of education in your state. Mm -hmm. that, 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 those are out there, uh, those kinds of camps. So, um, that cooking class that, that your child might love having at camp, which is a culinary arts is a big field at camp these days, both out in the field when you're camping, but also when you're back in camp and you have that, that teaching classroom. Um, kids are using fractions. Kids are learning recipes. They're learning, um, you know, almost like a little bit of chemistry, right? You know, so it's, um, there's, a, there's um, this, this, let me pause for a second, Gail, and just add one other point, which is this is a really unusual time for camps because for the first time ever, because of the pandemic, the U.S. Department of Education is actually funded through ARPA, uh, funding for children who have been most disproportionately impacted by the pandemic, uh, kids who are under-resourced, um, to, to have the opportunity to go to expanded learning and enrichment enriching programs like this, um, including camp, summer camp, uh, this summer and next summer. So um, we're working with um, the authorities to help also help those campus-based programs that are run at schools, helping to um, campify them, 
make them more experiential and kinetic outside, right? Instead of in the in the classroom, because um, we know that's what kids need right now. Because it, 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 at camp, kids are really working on their skills. They're really learning to lean in on their dispositions to learning, like um, go deeper, right? Um, my son reads so much while he's at camp. It's an emphasis of the camp that he goes to is um, they have a library. Everyone brings lots of books and during their free time, they're encouraged to read. Um, and um, they're also encouraged. Uh, camp is one of the few places where he actually is engaged in writing like a newspaper hmm. uh, and he's on a podcast. And um, so they're doing and they're also shooting video and um, uh, learning uh, science. So it's just. Um, you know, sort of, you're right there years ago, it was about, uh, leisure, right? Leisure time mm -hmm. today. We recognize how essential it is, especially now in the pandemic, how essential it is that kids have an opportunity to re reconnect with their peers in person immersively so that they can, um, you know, let's just say that many people are starting to believe that our kids are developmentally delayed socially and emotionally because of the pandemic and the isolation. So camp is a place where we can provide them with a tremendous dose of SC, you know, social and emotional confidence, um, also confidence in general, also give them a chance to have a measure of independence from us, Gail, the parents, right? And, and I mean, let's be, let's be honest and kind. As parents, we have to take a look in the mirror and know that in the pandemic, probably some of us have become more codependent on our children than ever before. And we've held them so close that they can barely breathe, right? Mm -hmm. So um, camp is a really important step um, in helping a parent provide their child with a measure of independence so they can start to think about who they are and what they're interested in, start to make a few decisions, uh, all of this done in a very safe backdrop, right? Uh, make some safe decisions and uh, learn to make mistakes and um, and even even you know take a tumble now and again you know like just make you know whether it's a, with a friend having an, an argument with a friend without you there um, or something more more challenging so that that's that's why um, you know it's not it's it is there's no doubt about it in my mind I don't, I don't know that every parent really gets it that when you send your child to camp and they're out having fun, even at the waterfront, learning how to swim or on a canoe trip or at that arts and crafts program that they have at the camp, um, you're helping your child improve their grades. Absolutely. And I'm just curious, um, just, you shared so many of the uh, wonderful benefits of camp, um, you know, from the learning to the connection to the growth. How can, you know, um, how can you uh, help parents and families sort of, you know, understand the, the cost of camp, uh, understand its investment, um, any, do you have any words of, of wisdom or advice for parents who are maybe struggling or, or aren't sure if it's worth it, or maybe they uh, maybe need some help? I, Cause I think for a lot of families, yeah. uh, depending on the camp, I mean, some, you know, obviously there's a big range in costs, but yeah. the price, you know, the price tags can be, daunting for for a lot um yep. and you know i think you know it's 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 it can be overwhelming for families for sure so i just from your perspective uh can you just talk through that a little bit and maybe maybe why maybe why those costs are there um what's the benefit of it and and for those who may need some help where can they go or who should they seek out if um uh if they might need if they if camp something they'd like to do but maybe the the financial aspect of it is, is a little too hard for them. Absolutely. So about, about 93% of uh, the camps that we work with on a regular basis all offer uh, financial aid. So it's important to note that um, like, like applying for uh, college, you, every, most, most people have to, are, are trained to really ask about financial aid. I would say start early, number one, start early, start way earlier than you think you need to. Start calling those camps, weighing, you know, figuring out which camp is a bet is a good fit for you and for your for your child, um, and then also um, for your pocketbook. Um, and but but you have to ask the question: Do you offer financial aid? Um, you know, a lot of camps offer programs on a sliding scale. 
uh, based on on means. Um, you know, there are just you know. Uh, a lot of non not for profit camps that have scholarship programs. There are also for profit camps that have raised uh, funds through uh, their alumni um, for for scholarship as well. So um, you, I think that the key it's worth it's worth the investment. Um, but um, we know we recognize that um, there's really a you know a camp for every child and every family, and so you have to sort of figure out what can I afford for camp. Um, there are, you know, a day camp is typically less expensive than overnight camp, of course, there's, um, and also the day camp offers, um, there's a child care, uh, there's a, there's a, um, a tax credit that's available for day, for day camps, uh, like there is for child care, where that's not applicable to on, on overnight camp, unfortunately. Hmm. Um, but we recognize that, um, and I can tell you in this pandemic, the United States government that's focused, the branch of the government. Um, that's focused on child care, the Office of Child Care at D, uh, DH, uh, Department of, of Health and Human Services, mm -hmm. has really become more aware of how overnight camp and day camp are essential parts of the U.S. child care system. Mm -hmm. So, like I said, the, even, you know, there's even money coming through uh, the U.S. Department of Education to the state uh, departments of education to the local districts to try to funnel funding for more camp for more kids that way. But um, your faith institution might have a scholarship program, like One Happy Camper, maybe Gail, you've heard of that. Mm -hmm. um, there are also, um, uh, you know, the, the camps themselves typically have uh, financial aid. Sometimes parents have the opportunity to work at camp in exchange for camp for their child. Um, there, are, there are lots of ways to go about it. Um, but the, the most important thing is to, to start early, identify the camps that you're interested in, maybe some different price points, and then, um, and then get, get on the phone and, uh, or on Zoom and, and get to know those camp directors because, um, again, they're going to be your partner. Um, every high-quality camp director really understands that every child is an individual and, ev and every family is unique. And um, so they're going to be trying to determine what are the needs of your family and um, what are your capacities in terms of bringing your kid to camp, being able to afford it. And is there a way to meet you halfway? Um, also, you know, kids have, right now, children have all kinds of mental, emotional and social challenges. This is so do parents. <laughs> and so, you know, you're going to see camps this summer that are doing their best to staff differently with more resources around mental, emotional, and social health. Um, we, we recognize as a profession that we also have to work with parents um, in order to provide, they, you need, as, as a parent, you need the confidence in the camp in order to allow your child the space to have that, that experience. So we want to make sure that you have the whole 411 on how camp operates how often we're gonna talk as camp director and camp parent, um, what happens if you see a picture that doesn't look right, you know, how you reach out to them. And so um, there's gonna be a lot of trust developed over a period of time. And in the first few, in the first session of that, you're like the first time your child goes to camp in that first week, you're gonna, you know, your many children get homesick, right? This is a normal part of separation, separating from your parents. Um, but in COVID, it's 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 um, it takes a little even a little longer than it usually did, right? Because kids are a little out of sorts in general right now, and so for some, they're going to have a longer bout of, of homesickness. And believe me, we know that. So we're working really hard at camp to try to help uh, to work with you without involving you, right? To help uh, make camp fun and special and enjoyable as quickly as possible. So they can see the the beauty of the experience and stop dwelling on what's going on at home, right? So it's it's a partnership, um, and there's you know I I can't really stress enough. Um, just like if you were if you had the privilege of picking a school for your child, all the work that you would put into picking that school for your son or daughter, you want to spend that kind of time um, with the camp and maybe even more. Mm. Thank you for sure. Uh, that's that's very appreciative. Thank you for for that. And mm -hmm. uh, you touched on uh, just the homesickness aspect a little bit um, just now. Mm -hmm. um, so 
Say more about that, though, if you want to, Gail. It's okay. Yeah, that will do. So what I'm wondering is, you know, obviously homesickness is something that as that happens at overnight camp. It's not really, a, you know, it's not a new thing. It happens from time to time. Um, the question is, um, how do you cope with the, and when I say you, I guess I mean you, the camp, you, the parents, you, everybody, you, everyone but the child, counselors, how do you cope with a child who wants to come home from camp? Um, and when is it appropriate is there a point to uh, when is it appropriate to pull them out versus encouraging them to try to stay? Um, how is that handled? Because I'm 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 curious what the the process is and 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 also from you know if a parent if a child is read is you know writing letters home and and and, and talking about homesickness, what on the parent end, what should they be doing? Like should like how much yeah. should they be staying back? Should they be getting in touch with the camp? What's the uh what is the appropriate um, action taken? Because uh, I'm yeah. sure that's something that many many families have worried about from time to time. Absolutely. So you know, you, so you're you've picked, you've chosen your camp. They're off. You you have that drop off experience, um, which you know, in in COVID, by the way, you know, drop off is very different than it used to be. Mm. The bandy gets ripped off pretty quickly there because they can't. In COVID, you weren't going into the bunk, for example, right, to to make their bed for them or whatever, you know. So, and, and honestly, um, I think if you ask nine out of 10 camp directors would tell you that that's better for your child, like getting them into the routine at camp faster is better. Mm. Tell them you love them, give them a hug, send them on their way and, and you'll be writing them letters. And when you write, you know, when you write your child, especially that first letter, you know, you're going to probably send it even before they go to camp, maybe. Um, <laughs> so the camp has it for that first mail call or whatever. That letter should be all about um, talking about what they're doing at camp uh, and also um, um, celebrating the fun that they're having. Less less about what you're doing at home. Don't really talk about what you're doing at home. That just makes them think about home. You should really talk about what they're experiencing. Um, you know, send me some, send me a letter, tell me about your activities. I'd love to hear about them. Things are okay here, kind of boring. I'm sure you're having way more fun than us, love, mom, you know? And so that's, you know, those kinds of letters are really important, but, but also um, within, um, you know, you, you, there are people typically at most camps, um, if you're getting uh, difficult letters from your child, homesick letters, things like that, you want to, you want to go ahead and call the, the office, um, have a conversation with a parent liaison or with the camp directors, their designated person to, to, to work with you initially on those challenges, um, you know, uh, you, it, the, it's really important to avoid uh, the urge to rescue your child mm. uh, from camp because um, most of the time they will, the, as a general rule, kids settle into camp, they start to really love it. And the only other time they're crying is when they don't want to leave. Mm. So it, it, but you have to, you have to give camp some time and you have to recognize that in COVID having been through all that these young people have been through, they have experienced some trauma. And so it will, they may, they, it might take them longer to work through their homesickness than it did, let's say pre COVID. Mm -hmm. um, but you, you know, you can be communicating with the camp, hearing about and, and coaching them on what you think might work with your child. They would be interested in knowing what are the things that, um, uh, that would work. And I just want to be honest, you know, Gail, and also say that, if a child thinks that there's a chance their, their parent will give in and just come pick them up, they won't try very hard to adapt to camp. And so camp is all about helping our kids learn to have that measure of independence and become resilient, have more confidence in their ability, right? And also in their, uh, their ability uh, and also, um, well, just to develop their own interests on their own organically, as opposed to what you think they might be interested in, right? And so, um, so inevitably, um, there are things at camp that you're sending your child to go and have an experience that are challenging for them. That's where the magic happens, right? That's the special sauce of camp is that, you know, you have this, your child is embedded in a, in a community where they're really cared for, all these peers are there, they're spending all this wonderful time with their friends, and they're all trying uh, hard things, not all hard things, but some things are easy, but and I'd say the hard things are different for different kids, right? So um, 
you you want to give uh, you want your kids to understand before they go to camp that once you get there by the way gail when you get to camp you might feel a little homesick you might miss your father and i but you know um you're going to be okay that is totally normal i felt that way when i went to camp and by the end of the first week i was really loving camp uh, so you can acknowledge that and and you can, but you know acknowledge that when you go to camp you stay at camp and you work through camp and 99.9% .9 of the kids who do have a blast. And there is that one 1% or less than 1% where um, something doesn't work, right? And and that would be, a, a, a I would say, as a parent, you should really trust your camp director to help you. They'll help you understand when it's that scenario as opposed to the more typical scenario where they're just working through some separation anxiety. They haven't yet made a, a close friend or they have you know, maybe some, for some reason something happened, they didn't get the activity they thought they would get, mm -hmm. right? So um, that's another thing to just think about is when you talk about camp with your youngster, like help them understand that, um, well, sometimes we tell our kids, this is how it's gonna exactly be. And when it's not like that, Gail, right? Yes. Then your child is upset, right? Yes, yes. Right. So sure. we, we set their, we should set their expectations that there are all these fun things to do at camp. But, you know, in order, you know, not everybody can have their first choice at camp because there are only so many slots in this activity or that activity. So we need to set their expectations that you're not gonna necessarily get the thing that you want that first time. They're gonna do their best to give you some of what you want and also give you a chance to try some things that you had no idea you would enjoy, right? So I think, and, and, and camp is really like when you, you know, when you look back as a parent who went to camp, 30 years later, what do you remember about camp? Um, to me, it, it's the friends. It's uh, the friends you make, whether they're on staff or whether they're fellow campers. It's the lessons you learn, um, you know, those kinds of things, um, you, you know. And you, you, you're probably not thinking about um, the, the, um, the, the, you might be thinking about an activity that you really enjoyed, but, it, but it's typically the people that you were with and how they made you feel that you remember most when you're grown up and you think back on your camp days. So I think that the most important thing for a parent to do is when you decide to send your child to camp, really get to know the camp directors and leadership and get, get us develop a sense of confidence in them. Um, ask lots of questions to get to that point. Um, talk to your, your friends and neighbors who are already sending their child to that camp um, and get a sense of how they maneuvered because they're gonna, there's going to be a moment after you've dropped off your child. <laughs> uh, you, you, I'm getting emotional just thinking about it. a moment after you drop off your child and you're <laughs> driving back to your house or your city or wherever, you know, back to the hotel and getting ready to go home and uh, thinking, gosh, should I do the right thing? Is my child safe? Are they happy? And, you know, you just sort of have to, like, take a deep breath. It's a skill that your kids are learning at camp at the same time. They're learning how when they get to that high anxiety moment, mm. take a deep breath, right? And just let it go and, and keep going, right? And and um, and some parents just will break down it. They'll get full clumped, full clumped and just yes. break down in tears. And that's a really human experience. You have been with your child 24 hours a day, seven days a week for nonstop, right? With all these disrupted school year kinds of yes. situations where they haven't been going to school and going to school and having to go to school. And it's been a one interesting pandemic. And so um, this is going to be good for you and it's going to be good for your kid. Absolutely. Uh, you made me laugh because uh, I was thinking about when I, you know, when my summer camp days, um, you know, at the, uh, we, we all gather at a bus stop and then we, we, the bus took us all up to, up, up to camp. Um, a lot of parents were very emotional, as you were saying, you know, yeah. many of the kids were, well, all except for there was one, there was one parent who was very different and it was, it was my mom who just was so excited. She was so excited for summer camp to be starting and she'd be like cheering. She'd be like, yay, everyone's going to camp. So, That's you know, everyone has to so she was just very, I think she was very grateful as much for the summer as, uh, as we were. Um, That's wonderful. Yeah. yeah no, she, just, she was uh, very uh, happy and excited. And, uh, uh, but it's just very, it's very funny. Um, every, both children and, and their parents have very different uh, reactions and uh, yeah. all is expected. And, uh, I think that's that's good to 
good to acknowledge. Well, it, and, and can I just name one other thing, Gail? Like the, the truth is, you know, there are parents out there who will give their child a second phone. It's, you know, one to hide as opposed yeah. to one to be turned in. You know, if a child is traveling to camp by themselves, it's acceptable to send them with their phone and they put that phone in safekeeping for the session and give it back to them when they're getting on the bus to go home. Yeah. Right. Um, but there are parents who don't trust the camp who might do something like that and who might. Um, and that's kind of a codependency thing where yeah. they want to keep a communications link somehow with their child because, um, well, they need to talk to their child if you know what I'm saying, yeah. or yeah. they don't trust the camp director. And all of that's not good because yes. it communicates to the child that you don't think they can do it. Right? Thank you. Absolutely. Well, uh, well, thank you for sharing that. And uh, that's actually a great segue into, uh, you know, maybe like my closing question, which is uh, along with what you just shared, what are some other like maybe like, like maybe do's and don'ts uh, mm -hmm. for, um, for current and prospective uh, camp parents. And you, you mentioned, you, you alluded to one right there, which is, you know, maybe, you know, establishing that trust and not undermining the trust with, you know, camp directors and staff, but maybe what are some, if you have uh, some other ones that, yeah. um, that you could share that would sure. um, help families. Yeah. I, I would say that, I mean, just first of all, remember that the, you, you want to make these people are going to be taking care of your child. You want to set your kid up for success. So you, just like you leave that list of things with the babysitter when you go out for the evening, you really want to make sure that you're sharing co comprehensively with your uh, camp directors and they will also share with camp counselors when it's appropriate. Um, all the things that they need that, that they need to know to help your child have success at camp, have fun, relax, and be successful. So, um, you know, forever and a day camps have been asking questions about, you know, um, medical needs, uh, about dietary allergies around, uh, or maybe a special dietary need. Um, they've also, but, but also these days you have to sort of know that every, every child has been impacted by this, just like you have been, every child has been impacted by this pandemic. And so they're, they, each one of them has special individual, uh, mental, emotional, social health issues in addition to their medical issues that that you need to make sure that the camp is well and un, really understands um i can't tell you how many times parents have made the mistake of keeping some of that from the camp because they're afraid that you won't accept that child or um uh, you might treat that child differently in a bad way the reality is we you know camps are investing serious resources in having professional talent in camps to help kids develop their emotional skills, develop um, their ability to express their feelings. That's a big part of going to camp, right? The, the ups and the downs all happen. It all happens at camp. And, um, but we, it's a place where we're able to focus on the kids more than you can even focus on your kids because you have to go to work in the daytime, right? So, um, so I think that number one, fully inform parents on the needs, every need that you think uh, your child needs, sorry, uh, mm -hmm. and so that they can prepare everyone on their team to be able to best address those uh, with them, um, you know, um, and and know that they will tr treat that information with care and confidence and not uh, in professionally. Um, so that's that's number one. Number two. You know, a lot of times pre COVID anyways, parents were, you know, set set goals for their kids. We want to know what are your goals for your child while they come to camp? Um, but also be reasonable about those goals. Uh, parents can be pretty tough in insisting that, you know, just like if you set those expectations of that child that they're going to ride horses every day and then they get to camp and they find out it's one part of their summer experience, but not a, not a daily emphasis, much more typical, um, you know, Similarly, um, you need to hold your hold your expectations in check as a parent. Um, you know, understand that for most children today, going to camp is about um, there's some, there's going to be skill development, like like learning how to uh, do woodwork or learning how to play tennis or learning how to swim. But also, you're going to have other kinds of skills that we're really leaning into, which is 
around their social and emotional well-being, right? Helping your kids learn to manage their emotions um, that they're feeling now. And it's, it's um, you know, um, it, that's, a, that's a core piece of going to camp right now. And so um, um, have empathy for the camp director and their work. And uh, believe me, they have empathy for you as a parent. They definitely do. Um, so I think that um, also, you know, um, don't overthink all the things that your child, don't overpack your kid, follow the instructions of the camp. Um, if you send the kitchen sink, they only have room for so many kitchen sinks in camp, you know, and, um, and all that stuff just gets in the way of kids having a clean and hygienic cabin environment. Um, and um, I, I would just tell you also, that, I mean, a lot of kids have different dietary needs, dietary, dietary allergies, um, but also camp is a place where kids learn to try foods mm -hmm. all the time. So um, encourage them. They're not going to have, uh, they, there may be an alternative if they really don't like what the, the entree that's being served that day, but there's usually salad, there's fruit, there's other proteins available. So, uh, you know, um, I would just, just I think the, the core piece of this is being a good partner for, for you and the camp director to be good partners for each other. Mm -hmm. um, and if, if you do it right, it's an incredible partnership for four or five or six years. Um, so um, I think that those are the kinds of things um, I, I would say, um, you know, do right, find out whether you're supposed to send packages to your kids or not. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there may be a rule against packages, there may be a rule for packages, what you can put in them, follow those rules. Um, you know, again, help your, your partner, camp director, run a great camp. Um, and, um, and, and also know that um, we are not out of this pandemic. So um, we, no one can predict yet what summer will look like in 22. Uh, but we, we camp professionals know that we can run success, camp successfully in COVID if we follow some very consistent uh, multi-layered mitigation strategies, right? As uh, included, you know, pharmaceutical and non-pharmaceutical. So, um, you know, if we get to a point where there's a variant this summer, take a deep breath and know that the camp director is going to be leaning into that multi-layered mitigation strategy and it's going to be okay. Kids have been incredibly resilient, incredibly resilient about wearing masks when they had to at mm -hmm. camp and, and following all the instructions that were given to them on how to, how to do it. And um, so we're ready for that. Um, and, you know, um, I think that um, also, you know, many camps, will tell you that the you know you want you want to give your child as as an interruption free summer as you possibly can so um get them up to date on their vaccinations all of them we had an issue in 2019 in the new york area with measles yes. as you remember i do right? yeah so they need to be up to date on all their vaccines and um follow all those instructions and um and that will provide your child with the best possible opportunity to have an interruption free summer experience right and get set for for school um and they will come back i mean i remember that first summer my son went to camp in covid uh he was kind of tired of being around his parents <laughs> right I mean, let's, yeah. and and so uh, when he came back from camp he was more self-confident he was more relaxed he was con he was more communicative he wouldn't stop talking about camp and he went to school with this tremendous sense of self-confidence and uh well-being and um he was able to help his friends deal with all the code protocols that happened to be happening that summer that fall was the kids went back to school and not everybody had had camp yeah. so um you know, if you trust the system and trust the process and you, you know, it's amazing what happens when the kids come out of the other end of the summer experience. Um, don't, you know, and um, uh, what was I going to say? So you're just asking for other hints. Um, I, I would, um, you know, I, I would write to your child, you know, and, and follow the, the camp will coach you on how much of that to do. Um, even an experienced camp director like me, I tend to overdo it and know that you might overdo it. Um, a lot of parents want to choose a camp because they have, they publish like 25,000 pictures of every possible thing that happened that summer. Mm -hmm. um, and that's wonderful to see, have a one-way mirror into what's going on at camp. But we also have parents who say, oh, 
something's wrong. I can see it in their face. And then they call the parent, the camp. And yeah. so just again, work with your partner, camp director, and know that um, you have to let go. <laughs> you have to let go. <laughs> big part of it, it sounds like. Um, it sounds yeah. like it's a big, a big step for for parents as well as as well as children. Um, yeah. So. Um, you have to model. It's like modeling. It's like modeling confidence for your kids because they're going to pick up on your anxiety, big time, right? And 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 when and when they ask you why am I going to camp because maybe they they don't maybe you haven't had that conversation yet. You should talk about the fact that camp is a really special time in their life when they get to be somewhere where it's just one hundred percent human, no technology, all surrounded in nature, right? Fresh air and nature fun activities galore where they learn things yes but you're learning while you're playing and having fun and yeah there'll be hard days at camp when you're doing challenging things but explain to them that that's you know challenges are never are, you know it's all about a challenge is a challenge because it's difficult not because it's impossible and that part of going to camp is learning to do things that you didn't think you could do and then learning oh my gosh i could do that that was easy uh, I'm going to try this now. And so like for me, I never got up on a stage and acted until I went to camp. Hmm. It, really, in all of my experiences growing up, that was camp was the place where I learned to get up on stage and act or sing or uh, do things I would never have done before. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So it, we think about it as healthy risks. So um, safe risks. And they learned to, you know, um, They'll learn to lead, they'll learn to follow, they'll learn to be a friend, learn how to make a friend, and um, and really uh, connect with other people their age. And that's not, there's a, a very finite time in your life when you get to go to camp and have those experiences and, um, and, it, and come away with all those benefits that research shows impacts and, uh, you know, really impacts the way that you succeed in school, the way that you succeed in work, uh, all those problem solving things carry stick with you when you get your first job when you uh you know and then when you get married and, and go off and have your own family life skills that come from camp you know carry with you to those experiences so um so you know if you talk it up the right way enough they'll really understand and then uh, but they won't have preset assumptions about having horseback every day yeah, <laughs> and, sure. you know, or ha being horseback at all you know <laughs> gotta be careful what you promise so absolutely yeah thank you well thank you tom uh for You're taking welcome. the time to talk with me today um i i really appreciate all, everything you had to share I'm, I'm sure i'm sure we could talk uh on and on there's so so much to get into about camp yeah. and and all the wonderful things it has to offer um and Can I just share one or two other little things? Yes, yes, please, please, please. Yes, go, so, go, go ahead. Well, one one thing is, uh, you know, so, you know, we talked about going online and looking for a camp. Well, it's important that you kind of understand the lay of the land around camps across the United States. So there are day camps and there are overnight camps, there are family camps and lots of different kinds of camps out there. But, um, and, uh, and I would also say that, like, camps are regulated at the state level, not at the federal level. So, and, and, States regulate camps very differently across the country. Some regulate more than others. So the only way a parent knows in all 50 states whether a camp actually meets the foundational standards of the field of camp is if they're accredited by the American Camp Association. It's one of the most common misperceptions out there is that every camp is accredited. In fact, accreditation is not regulation, right? So every state might regulate camp to some extent. Hmm. They may not, by the way, also depends on the state. So um, if we have on our we have on our website the regulations for every state, uh, if you're interested. But um, but but so parents um, should start by looking for an American Camp Association accredited camp for their child, you know, day camp, overnight camp, family camps. Um, we do have a tool on our website. Um, we call it Find a Camp. Okay. And it's just find.acacamps.org, where you can go and there are accredited camps and there are camps that are not yet accredited on there as well. Um, and so it just, um, accreditation is an educational, a voluntary educational experience where a camp director can take that extra step to go through a peer review process 
on an ongoing basis to make sure that they are keeping up with the, the latest standards around health and safety and risk management. So that's an important one, one important consideration um, to really think about is choosing an accredited camp. Um, and then, um, and then just where do you, where does one look to find camps? And, and, and so that's an important part is that, that find a camp tool. The other thing I would say, um, let's, let's talk to parents maybe that have uh, also an older teen or uh, a college age youngster. The experience of working at a camp is probably one of the like high quality staff experiences at summer camp really prepare a youngster for college, really prepare them for the work world. They learn to communicate more effectively. They learn to collaborate. All the things that they're teaching the kids as a counselor at camp, they are really leaning into and learning it immersively. Um, so they're learning leadership skills. They're learning to do and teach really hard things to uh, kids in ways that are um, fun and exciting. So um, they're, they're banking some amazing competencies while working at camp. And um, you can, you know, the many uh, famous celebrities, famous uh, business people uh, out in the world today who credit camp with giving them the skills that they needed to be successful in life. So I think that's another thing is if you have a, a college age student who's not sure what they're doing this summer, in some cases, they may have to go to school during the summer because of COVID disruption. But if they have the summer available, I can think of no better uh, summer employment than working at a camp while you're in college. Appreciate that. Thank you for for that, Chair, and um, and that uh, that plug for 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 parents who have older children who maybe even past the camper point. Uh, that there's lots of value to be had um, yeah. beyond the camper stage for sure. Um, I can definitely all the all the things that our younger children are feeling in terms of uh, anxiety and depression. And, and other other challenging emotions, um, our, our older kids are also feeling. And um, having a really busy summer where you're putting your heart into helping other people, other kids uh, have fun and learn while they do that, um, really helps a, a young person um, focus on um, coming out of this pandemic with some really strong skills and competencies. And so I think that, yeah, I. Um, it, it is it is a tough time uh, for camps because um, you know we we right now demand for camp is off the charts right it's soaring new families returning families everyone wants to send their child to camp and there's not enough room for everyone but yes. to the extent that we you know to the extent that we can staff camps with high quality staff enough high quality staff then we can operate at scale right and in COVID so far we haven't been able to operate mostly at scale because either because of COVID protocols or because of staffing shortages. So I'm, I'm saying this, all of this for a good reason. <laughs> I, 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 I understand that. And I, and hopefully um, this summer will uh, be a great one for, for, for all involved, for campers, for parents, for staff, uh, leadership, everybody. And hopefully uh, it will continue. Things will continue to improve going forward and, uh, the uh, camps can keep bringing their value to everybody um, in the best way that they know how. Uh, so thank you again, Tom, for, for taking the time to chat with me today. Um, I know I personally uh, got a lot from this conversation and I, I know that um, my listeners will as well. Um, you know, this is tremendous and I hope that we can uh, talk again soon. Uh, yeah, I love that. For sure. And I, um, you know, I, I wish you all the best with um, Thank you. your own camp journey, I should say, even though. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I have my own journey too. You know, yeah. and Gail, I would just challenge you. Um, I would just, in closing, I would just challenge you as a parent, uh, as you send your, your kids off to camp this summer, um, think about, because um, you're going to, the most common question I, I used to get as a camp director was, how did you get my kid to do this or get my kid to do that? Yeah. What's your secret? And they're going to share with you the structure of how they do what they do at camp. Because at camp, we have kids cleaning their room. We have kids mm -hmm. cleaning their bathroom. We have kids picking up their clothes off the floor every single day, right? And that's just one example. How can they? How can that happen at home? And so a lot, a lot of times, uh, what my challenge, uh, Gail, is uh, find ways, working with your partner camp director, 
to bring the skills that they've learned at camp home and campify your family experience, campify your family experience, make it more fun, more experiential, but also perhaps more structured in the way that they've learned at camp. So, cause, cause then they're, they're getting camp, a little bit of camp at home, they're getting camp during the summer and it's all working for their benefit. Absolutely. That's a wonderful, thank you for that. It's a wonderful suggestion and a wonderful way to close um, our conversation here today. Uh, wish you all the best. Good luck with all your uh, planning. I'm sure it's, I'm sure it's a very busy time for you um, yep. as uh, applications are coming for camps and people are probably asking a lot of questions. So I know you're a busy man, I imagine. Right. And I wish you all the best and I look forward to uh, speaking again soon. It was okay. so nice to meet you today and great chatting with you. Have a wonderful day. Thanks, Gail. Take care. All right. Bye-bye.